Dirk. Thank you, Fatima. So, so that was the process of, of getting your account set up, um, getting your SSH key um, generated. And now we're actually going to talk about logging into the Jasmine servers themselves. So the, um, the common modes that most people will use at the start of connecting to Jasmine, you'll either be logging into work interactively via an SSH session, um, or you'll be interested in transferring files to and from Jasmine, typically using rsync or SCP over SSH, and Sam will talk about that in more detail later. So we're going to talk about logging in via SSH. So we need to think about the appropriate tools that you need to do this. And essentially, you need a terminal. And depending on your host operating system, um, there will be different ways that you'll access these. Um, from Linux, I think most of you will be fully aware of how to find a terminal. Um, but we'll provide a bit more information on using a Mac or Windows. Um, as mentioned before, all of these things support the, the standard protocols and tools that we'll be talking about today. So if you're a Mac user, then you need to search for the, the terminal app um, inside your operating system and then just start that up and that will bring up a, a, a little terminal window that you can then type into. If you're a Windows user, we strongly recommend um, that you use a tool called MOBA Xterm. Um, we've got the link here that, that you can go and, and download it from. And there are two editions. There's a home edition and a professional edition. The home edition is free um, and has a whole heap of features for free. So you can just follow that download link and you'll be able to install that on Windows. So what is MOBA Xterm? It's a, a, a graphical user interface that, that emulates um, a terminal for you, but you have multiple tabs and a whole heap of other features and tools available that you can read about from this link below. Okay, so when we're ready to go, we really have um, four commands that we need to worry about typing into our terminal. The first one, we need to start an SSH agent session. Now, typically, you only need to do this once, and once you've got your agent session running inside your terminal, you could connect to lots of different servers from that. The second thing here, we're, we're using the SSH add command, and this adds a private key to the SSH agent session that is now running in the terminal. So in this case, we are asking it to add the id underscore rsa underscore jasmine private key that we've generated in the process that Fatima was talking about. Now we have those two things in place, we can log on to the login server at Jasmine. So this is jasmine-login1.cd.ac.uk and that is a gateway server that um, most sessions will have to come in through. Um, an important aspect of this is that we are using the minus capital A argument and, and what that does is that it forwards the SSH agent session onto the login server and that means that when we're now on the login server, we can use the same credentials and log into our target server. So here we're logging into one of the scientific analysis servers. Um, I've chosen to forward the agent session again with minus A, which means that I could then log into another server. I should just mention that my colleagues here with Max inform me that the um, Initial command here is not required typically on a Mac, so you don't have to generate your SSH agent session because there's already one running. So there are four key commands that we have to go through, four steps we go through here. So we're just looking at an example here of logging in using MOBA Xterm on Windows. And item one here, we set up the SSH agent session. Item two, we're adding the private key now notice here that we've been prompted for a passphrase. So when you create your private key, you should always um, encrypt it with a passphrase. And so we, we have to add that in and it will tell us it's now added the identity of that key. Then we log into the gateway server, the login one server, which is item three here. And there's some output from the server telling us a bit about logging in. And then finally, 
I want to go to the Jasmine Sci 2 server and at that point I don't need to type my username or type app because it already knows who I am because I've already logged into the Jasmine Login 1 server. And, and finally at the bottom I'm in a command prompt and I can start working interactively on Jasmine. So there's a few things worth thinking about when you log in. Um, many users will say, well, why can't I do anything from the login server? Um, the key thing is that the login server, its only role is really to act um, as, a, as a security gateway. So um, you won't find that your group workspaces are mounted on there, you won't find the Cedar archive on there, and you won't find access to many of the, the software tools on there. So be aware that if you find you're on Jasmine but you can't find any of the resources you're used to, that you need to SSH to a, a target server that you're actually going to do your work with. In terms of which target server, um, initially when you're just trying Jasmine out and you want to do some generic processing, we'd recommend using one of the SI servers, and I've used SI2 here, there's also SI1 and SI3, and if you look on our documentation you can find out more. Um, there are other servers that you might have access to that, that are more advanced or depend on the particular project you're working on. It's also worth us mentioning the login message. So when you first log into Jasmine, um, your terminal will display a whole heap of information. Um, a few key aspects of that for you to pay attention to. Please make sure that you've read the acceptable use policy um, so that you know what, what's expected of you as a Jasmine user. Um, you'll see there are also some um, links and a, a contact address. Um, please make sure you use the support at cedar.ac.uk contact rather than any um, specific administrator addresses if you want to get in touch with us. And finally, the message of the day includes information about current resource usage on Jasmine. So it tells you how many people are logged into each of the servers, how much free memory and CPU usage there is. So you might decide from that um, to use a, a machine that's being um, least utilised at that point. Just to say something about the SSH arguments, um, so we've talked about the importance of the minus capital A argument, which will forward your SSH agent session, and it will mean that you don't have to keep providing um, login credentials. Um, another common SSH argument is minus X, which forwards an X Windows connection, and you'll need to do that on every SSH connection that you need to run if you want to um, forward this connection to run things like a browser interface or, or a GUI window. And it's important to note that at present the performance of X on Jasmine is not particularly good. Um, we're aware that some users need to use it, um, but at the moment it's not very fast. A quick word about data transfer. Um, if you're doing data transfers, which Sam will tell you about in a minute, um, you don't actually need to hop through the login servers. So if, you're, if you want to connect directly to a transfer server, you can do that without the intermediate gateway server. And finally, here are some links that you can <coughs> refer to that tell you more about setting up SSH and logging in, and how to diagnose login problems, and specific support with MOBA.